So we have very deep understanding and domain expertise in the technology itself, be it the gas turbine, the steam turbine, uh, even the jet engine, the electrical submersible pump, because we develop this technology in-house in, in, the, in the company. And then we introduce the uh, digital layer and the software solution that goes along with that technology equipment. Uh, so there are no other company out there that has both uh, that's strong on both sides, the technology development piece and the, the, the digital piece. So that ensures that our, our digital solutions would uh, deliver the best output and the best outcome for the customer since it's been developed by a, a company that understands the technology very well. So that's, I would say, the, the, the key advantage we have when it comes to digitization of the utility sector but also the energy infrastructure uh, sector. Um, when it comes to how you do it. So our approach is that we work with the customer in transforming the overall culture of the customer's organization towards the digitization of, of that uh, entity or the organization itself. Uh, to your point, it's not just a matter of plugging in some digital solutions, software solutions, and then asking them to digitize themselves. It's much bigger uh, story than that. It involves uh, creating a culture. It involves uh, investing in human capital that understands well the digitization of the process. So you need to both train the in-house teams that you have, but also hire a new caliber that is uh, that has a digital mindset. Uh, and then we the, the other piece is that we work with the customer to look at the energy ecosystem, what we call the energy ecosystem. So not just digitizing a vertical within your industry or your facility. So for example, you don't just look at digitization of the power generation uh, vertical. Rather, you have to look at the benefits that you can achieve and we help our customers quantify these benefits uh, on the digitization of the whole energy ecosystem. So from the, the energy units, uh, be it uh, natural gas for example, uh, from the production expiration stage to the all the way in the value chain until the consumption in the household in, term, in the form of electrons. You need to look at the digitization of all of the different stages of transformation of the energy unit from its raw form, natural gas, uh, then converting it to electrons, power generation, transmitting it on, on the grid but then consuming it in the in the household. The digitization of all of these different stages delivers quantifiable benefits to our customers. And this has been our approach in how we are uh, working with the different organizations we work with in, in uh, looking at the value of digitization in a holistic way. So, we are carefully and closely monitoring the uh, electric vehicle sector and landscape and interested in a number of uh, areas of change that will happen. Specifically, how the increase in the electric vehicle fleet in countries will increase the demand for electricity because of the charging uh, needs of the batteries of these electric vehicles. Um, we want to better understand how this new consumer or new demand that will go on the grid through the, the, the need for recharging uh, the batteries would impact the power supply requirements in a country. Um, so that's, I would say, uh, on, on the research and analytics stage we are working on that piece. Um, the other element is again our digital solution can actually, when it's deployed, not just at the power plant level, but we also are interested in seeing digitization or the linkage, the digital linkage between the power plant on the supply side and the uh, consumer level uh, digitization and connecting the uh, recharging stations with specific sensors and uh, software solutions, digitizing it and connecting it to the power plant as well and optimizing how you manage the supply side and the demand side through the digital uh, layer of, of uh, deployment. So, uh, in the solar space, uh, if you look at the economics of solar today, how it's been evolving, uh, 
in the past uh, five years, there has been a radical fall in the cost of solar. Uh, driven by material research, so new material being introduced and improved material uh, for solar PV specifically. Uh, the efficiency has improved dramatically in the past few years. Now we're talking about 18% uh, to 20% efficiency improvement. Uh, the cost of solar has gone down, dollar per kilowatt uh, figures. Um, in many parts of the world, solar is achieving solar PV, especially specifically, is achieving what we call grid parity. So, uh, especially solar rooftops in some parts of the world, like in Italy, for example, and other parts where solar, the cost of solar PV is uh, equal or equivalent to the cost of conventional power generation in certain parts of the world. Uh, I think Korea has been uh, one of the leading countries in development of solar technologies. Uh, from the GE side, we are well positioned when it comes to uh, inverters for utility scale uh, solar PV, land mounted uh, solar PV plants coming from uh, the power conversion business in GE. At the time being, our focus on solar PV is in the R&D stage in terms of improving the efficiency of uh, thin film technology, which we are placing a bet on it, given that it's it's, uh, it's not heavily impacted by high ambient temperature. So the efficiency of uh, thin film technology in solar PV uh, does not fall drastically when there's high ambient temperature, which is good for many parts of the world where you have uh, hot uh, weather. Uh, so between the inverters and our development of the thin film technology at the R&D stage, this has been our focus at, uh, at the time.